What does it mean to be lost? Is it a physical activity or a state of mind or both? Can you be intentionally lost? Well, my buddy Rob and I set out to the Lost River Range in Idaho to find out. And what we found was a lot more than just lines on a map. Welcome to not Idaho. So I am out on an adventure now with Rob from Revere Overland and my two kids. And we are looking to visit some of the most non-visited amazing mountains in Idaho. Mountains that I've driven by um, in the past and have always wondered like what's up there. And we're gonna go see what's up there on this trip. So cool that Rob's here visiting Idaho again. We get to do another adventure together. And right now we have landed in Montana because we really wanna go see this ghost town called the Bannock, B-A-N-N-A-C-K, ghost town. This is a pretty good start. I think tomorrow though, we're gonna see less and less people, more and more mountains, and have some pretty great adventures. So, um, welcome to this adventure. Let's go see what's in store. The mosquitoes were so bad here, we had to set up Rob's new screen tent, but I still had to make dinner for the kids out in the kill zone, so I picked an easy recipe and went as fast as I could. Even with the mosquitoes, the sunset and the moonrise were pretty special that night, which was a sign of things that come the next day. Outside of the beautiful view was a mosquito. But before I do anything else, it's time for coffee. Got this coffee from Cafe Mule or Cafe Mule, and it is a local roastery in Boise, Idaho. I am partnering with, and I love my coffee, and these guys make such great coffee, so I cannot wait for this this morning. Smells like morning. Now I feel like the morning has officially begun. Now I'm gonna get out of these mosquitoes and go see what's Rob in the tent. On this morning, I was jealous of Rob's truck because he had room to bring this mosquito tent and it made the morning not only bearable, but pretty nice. We had a lot of exploring to do today, so Rob and I quickly packed up camp and took one last look at the map before setting out. We're headed to the Bannock ghost town this morning. Yep. And that's something that you found on Onyx. Yeah, right? it's one of those curated trails, uh, so it takes you up to the ghost town and then over Bannock Pass. So we're going to hit that, go see the ghost town, and then try to make our way over to the Lemhais? Yeah. Yeah, we're, so the whole route we've planned out here is done using onyx we got a little we found a road that goes through the middle of the range it shows yeah. up it's not one that's curated though so there's no information on it we'll, we'll curate it ourselves yeah it's a and, road and then we'll <laughs> add it to onyx <laughs> and um i've driven by lemma highs so many times like on the highway and i've always looked up and thought man i want to go explore up there so today if we get over there and and ex get to explore it and get a camp up there it'd be pretty rad i'm excited if it's as pretty as this i'm assuming it's gonna be prettier my only hope, my only hope is that there are less mosquitoes. <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be carried away. Yeah, speaking of, let's get out of here. Yeah. Mosquitoes are coming. Have you heard of uh, Bannock Ghost Town? Excuse me, ma'am. Bannock Ghost Town? No? I'm just trying to find a go. We're just tourists. Hi. Jeez. Man, this is a gorgeous drive. It is very uh, quintessentially Montana. Was that the right word? I used a long word to make me sound more photosynthesis. Yeah, quintessentially Montanian. And, uh, we just are on this long, straight, beautiful road out here with all these Montanian peaks around us. I don't know what they are, uh, but they are just gorgeous. So it's really fun to be out here 
in the sagebrush with these mountains all around us and hopefully we'll make good time into the uh, ghost town and be able to make it over to the Lem Highs later this afternoon. Looks like we're almost there. Yeah, I see the uh, State Park color on the map. This looks really cool, dude. Okay, we are here at Bannock Ghost Town. We're gonna go walk around and uh, and check it out. From what it looks like here, there's like a lot of intact buildings, which I think is, is really neat. So let's go see what this place is all about. Welcome to what was once the capital of the Montana Territory, a thriving mining town of over 4,000 people, Bannock, Montana. It was founded back in 1862, got a post office in 1863, and thrived until the late 1930s. This incredibly well-preserved and restored ghost town gives you a realistic glimpse into what Western frontier life was like back at the turn of the 19th century. My kids were totally enthralled walking through some of the homes and interacting with history. There are 26 marked buildings in the town, each with its own story, like the Masonic Lodge slash schoolhouse that still has desks and chalkboards. And as Rob used to be a teacher, he felt right at home. And the kids got the sense that some things don't change all that much. There was also the county courthouse that was turned into a hotel, which visitors are free to roam through. The narrow and long hallways and intact rooms with plaster walls are right out of an old Western movie. The kitchen is massive and must have been used to make meals for events in town or as a restaurant for the town's many inhabitants and visitors in the early 1900s. My favorite stop, though, was the saloon. With an out-of-tune piano, card tables, and a long wooden bar, it felt like you could step right up and order a bourbon. Uh, what'll it be, sir? I'll take uh, Igor. Please. Cool. That a lot of evil, yeah. <laughs> I wish there were more state parks like this because when we go see ghost towns just on the trail, like Rob, you and I have been, we've been to ghost towns, it's usually like basically a decrepit building and you really have to use your imagination. But here you can really see just the whole picture. There's like furniture and like we found a vacuum cleaner and it's like, what is that thing? So this is a totally different experience than a ghost town I've ever had. Bannock is a special place. It's one of the best ghost towns I've ever seen, and it deserves a visit if you're in the area. To make a donation to help preserve this piece of history, click on the link in the description of this video. Oh good, the pavement ends. We've driven a little bit on dirt, but we didn't really need to air down because the roads are so maintained. But that sign up there uh, says rough road, which is like, time to get dirty. It felt like we were finally in the middle of an adventure as we headed towards the pass that would take us over the Beaverhead Mountains, cross into Idaho, and lead to the Lemhi Mountain Range, which I was super excited to see. Just look to your right, right out the window. You see those mountains in the distance with the snow on them? Which ones? The ones with the snow on them, way out there. There's way, and the, way? the farthest one's back. Yes. Those are the Lemhi. That's what we're Oh man, this is such a beautiful path. Oh wow, yeah, but anyway, we're not even doing good stuff yet. most excited about. Um, the Lemhi's and the Lost River Range, I think are like world-class, super gorgeous mountain ranges that no one really visits. I even hesitate to put it on uh, camera because it's so cool and so special. But um, I, it's also the place that I'm the most excited about putting on camera because it is so beautiful, I think. Let's go find out. The small town of Ledore is a fantastic place to stop and support the local economy by gassing up and getting whatever supplies you need, which could include coyote hides and inappropriate t-shirts. Well, I am glad we made a stop in Ledore. Kids got ice cream and we are ready to explore. It looks like there's another lake up here to the right. Meadow Lake. You want to go check it out? Yeah, let's do it. So Rob and I took a side trip to go find the lake we saw on a map. There were just enough squiggly lines around it to draw our interest. I mean, this is super pretty. 
I'm catching glimpses through the trees and this looks like it's going to be really good. Can't wait to get up there and see what it's actually like. The mountains above us are just totally spectacular. Before long, we approached the lake, and Rob got some bad news. Looks like you got the hike in. No! Well, we're just hiking up to this lake. Unfortunately, we have to hike because there is a gate on the road, and it has a Jeep with a, with a slash through it, which means Finn cannot, is not permitted to drive up here, even though the road is perfect. But um, it's good to get out and stretch our legs a little bit and buck the idea that Overlanders never do anything but drive. I know that's mostly true, but not today. In any case, we are here approaching this lake with these massive rock formations that look like they were cut by a glacier. I mean, this is something out of a national park, easy. Like name your famous national park, and this is just as scenic as that. But we're gonna go look at this lake and try to get a bird's eye view of what we're looking at here. So let's go do that right now. Be responsible for your own safety. Da -na 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 -na. Meadow Lake is flanked by nine and 10,000 foot sheer rock peaks, which are a dime a dozen in the Lemhi range. It's a classic mountain lake that is just begging for fishing rods, paddle boards, and canoes. You just can't beat the view. It just makes you feel really small in like the best possible way. So this has been fantastic. I'm so glad we decided to walk up and take a look at this. But the good news is like we're not done yet. We got a lot more to see today. So let's go, let's go find some other cool stuff. So what's going on here, Rob? Well, I may have left a little too much air in my gas bag. So I'm venting it. Just letting some of the air out. So <laughs> it's like inflated like a huge balloon. When venting, uh, point spout away from face. <laughs> yes. And up, so it's air that comes out, not gas. So we headed down the mountain and started looking for a camp spot for the night. This is one of my favorite types of roads. Green everywhere and leading up to like a uh, massive mountain pass. This is like definitely my jam. You gotta see if there's any camping up there. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, dude, let's save it. It's five o'clock. I mean, let's just have an easy night. I found a fire rink with a pretty cool valley view. Cool, I'll be right there. What do you think? I think it's hard to beat this view. Sometimes you have to just take whatever campsite you can find, but sometimes you win the lottery. And tonight, camped on this little perch, we felt like we were winners. So for dinner tonight, I'm going to make uh, this recipe that Kate invented uh, on our Oregon overlanding trip when we went from Hell's Canyon to the Pacific Ocean. And it's so cut up sausages, cut up hot dogs, because Adele likes hot dogs, um, onion, peppers, and you cook it, and then you put pizza sauce on it, and maybe cheese if you want to. It's really yummy, really easy to make, um, and the kids love it. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. So one of the things I love about our camp setup is this um, Outback Adventures Trail Gator Tailgate Table. It's kind of a mouthful to say. But we've had it for years. We use it every time for lots of stuff, not just making dinner, but lots and lots of stuff. And it's so solid, so great. Love this thing. The other thing I love is this Jetball Genesis. This thing has been such a trooper. I don't know how many times we've used it a ton that keeps going strong the um the regulators on it the temperature regulators on it make, make it so you can get really dialed in um heat so it's not just like scorching or cold and it packs down really really small so um it saves us space in the jeep i've just been loving it so i want to make it we'll make dinner on this thing and on this thing tonight i'm just gonna add a little olive oil first thing i'm gonna do is just Get this onion going. That would go in first. We'll saute this with just some olive oil. I like to cut these up into big chunks so they're kind of easier to fork. And while all that deliciousness is sauteing, I'm going to cut up some sausages. 
Oh, they're gonna go in. Oh la la. Those go in. And while all this is just heating up, I'm going to start putting all the food ingredients that I didn't use away and picking up my camp kitchen so I have a lot less to do when we're finished eating tonight. And our last ingredient is because kids love pizza. I'm just gonna put on a little bit of pizza sauce, not too much, just a little bit. And they just like it, so who am I to argue with pizza sauce? What do you think? Yummy. Mm. Yum? Chef's kiss, awesome. Yes. We are making a gourmet yes. Uh, what do you so, Well, you always make fun of me for having pasta, so tonight I'm doing something that's not pasta. But it's just as quick and easy. <laughs> got roast beef in gravy and then some nice mashed potatoes and all I have to do is heat it up. Honestly, I bet it tastes as good as what oh, I'm it's making. It's so good. <laughs> it was really nice to just settle in at camp, watch the sky start to change, and get to hang out with each other. So, uh, Rob lives in Kentucky, and uh, I made a request some time ago, like if he was coming back this way, could he get a certain bottle of bourbon, and boy did he over deliver. So check this out, this is Lantons. Something's going on with the seal there. That's okay. He's had it in his truck for weeks, maybe months, uh, and you've got the little Right around top, I'm going to crack this baby open tonight and bring this with me to Oakland Expo to Northwest as well. But not just one. <laughs> but wait. Oh, no, 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 there's, there's more. more. There is another Plantons. There it is, folks. So ask and ye shall receive. Thanks, Rob. It's the only two that they've had delivered this year. They're right here. Who knew? It's hard to get in Kentucky too. It is. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> there goes like eight dollars. Uh, I think we're gonna call it a night, dude. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired. Too. It's not one of those stay up super late nights. It's eight o'clock. It's my best. Yeah. Okay. Well, cheers. Uh, cheers. See you in the morning. As much fun as we were having on this adventure so far, we had no idea how crazy the next day would be. It's great to see the back and uh, it's going to be a fight to the finish, okay? On the mark, set, go. We may look like fools and we may be fools, but we were in a serious competition to see who would drive over the mountain pass with all the glory of winning a tent closing competition. Rob's AT Habitat closes up surprisingly fast for how huge it is, and my Desert Armor four-person tent is fast, but not that fast, so it was a pretty close race. So I just was victorious um, racing to the tents, but Rob is still waiting around for me to pack up the rest of my camp, so I, I, guess, I guess we're both winners. <laughs> so we were off to climb Big Windy Peak, a road that would take us near 10,000 feet in elevation. And what we didn't know then was that even in July, there was still snow up there, and it would be a problem. This road that we're crossing, I think we're, it's going to get up to like 96 or 9,700 feet. We're at about 7,600 feet right now, so about 2,000 feet up from where we are. It looks like a little tiny bit of snow down here. But when you get up there, the, it can actually be a significant amount of snow. I'm hopeful that uh, we'll both fit through, especially Rob and his super wide tundra. So let's go find out. decided to walk this trail because it's hard to see what's up ahead and that we got to a point that looked a little sketch 
um, especially for the Tundra up here. If we need to turn around, it's gonna be tough to turn that long truck around. But we walked it, it looks fine. We also were looking for snow. We haven't seen any yet. There is definitely snow up there, but I'm not convinced it's on the trail. So we're gonna keep driving ahead and keep enjoying these views. But I'll tell you what, once you get up this high, like my hackles start coming up. There's something about being up this high that just, I don't know, I think like, like my human survival instinct kicks in a little bit and it's like, okay, slow down, this is not safe. But the truth is the road looks just fine and um, the views are beautiful and uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of heights, uh, but it does afford some incredible views and we'll, be, we'll hopefully be making our way back down very soon. It looks like we're just about ready to cross over here. As we got closer to the top, I kept thinking to myself, I can't believe I live in Idaho and have never been here before. My own backyard was just blowing me away. Before long, we reached the summit, which served as a perfect perch to stop and take it all in. And there was a lot to take in. So we made it to the top of this saddle and it is spectacular. We have the Beaverhead Mountains on one side. We have the Lost River Range Mountains over here, which are spectacular. Idaho's highest. I can see Mount Bora. I can see all these amazing mountains. And that's where we're going. Like we're gonna go play over there in those mountains. And for an Idaho born mountain boy like myself, I don't know if it gets much better than this. I mean, I love the ocean. I love the lakes. But there's something about being on a mountaintop and looking out and seeing these other peaks that just fuels my soul. So I'm super happy right now and I cannot wait to drive down and go check out the Lost River Range. Okay, we, we made it up here. It's a beautiful view. One might say uh, it, uh, a view uh, to revere. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst. <laughs> Actually, before we go, we need to send a drone way up to the top there because it looks like there's a figure standing up there watching us. All right, we're out here in the Idaho outback. We think we spotted the same squatch, which is basically a really hairy human that looks like a Sasquatch standing up there on top of the mountain looking at us. We're gonna fly up there and see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I see something. What is it? Okay, it is. Yep, it's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning storms in the forecast, so we're That's hoping to maybe dodge those. Yeah, maybe we should hurry up and eat lunch and head on to the next mountain range. Yeah. So. Looks like we've got some snow on the road, but it's not much. It's, I think it's very passable. This is one of the most spectacular views I've ever had driving. Yeah, this is incredible. Oh, by the way, Rob, I forgot to tell you, happy 4th of July. Oh, yeah? Something happening today? Do you, do you don't know about the 4th of July? I don't know, was it important enough to know about? It was for King George. All kidding aside, these ridge lines are some of the best in the world. I'll put them up against Colorado, Utah, California, and Montana any day of the week. Oh, there's a cabin up here, Rob. I see it. Wanna go take a look at this thing? Yeah, of course. We come across old cabins all the time. Most of the time, they are sad reminders of someone's attempt to get rich mining, but there was something different about this one. It seemed more resilient than others we've seen, like it's still in use or it's kept up by someone. And up here at 10,000 feet, that's no easy task. A lesson that Rob and I learned quickly hereafter. As we were exploring side roads around Big Windy Peak, we started finding remnants of a tough and long winter. Well, we have a bit of snow. Uh, that's not good. How's it looking possible? The answer is maybe. This was the remnants of an avalanche with trees strewn across the road. However, someone had clearly passed through, so we were hopeful that with some digging and traction boards, we could find a line to get through. Our plan was to dig out the upper track to keep the rigs from being too off camber and to keep them from sliding off the snow. We decided to send the Jeep first since it has a narrower stance, but I still took my time to talk through how to approach the second amount of snow with Rob. So Rob, you think I should just Crawl it. Gotta crawl that stump. Crawl it, yeah.
Rob's wider tundra, we were a little concerned whether or not he'd make it over because of the tree debris everywhere. Okay, you're up. Uh, passenger! 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 You're in! It turns out a little digging in the future action boards did the trick, even for the big blue truck. But we weren't out of the snow yet. Ooh. Okay, well, both Rob and I made it through with like hardly any problems. I'm looking ahead and I see a few more snow berms, so maybe this is just practice for what's to come. <laughs> There's one more snow berm down here that I'm worried about. It's not this one. This was a huge avalanche. Oh, huge. So I think we can get over this. This is a pretty steep mound of snow, but it's short. And I think we can, it's not too off camber. I think we can get over it. And the good news is I'm looking ahead at the rest of the avalanche zone here, and I don't see any trees across the road, which is good. So. I'm going to tell Rob about this, I, but I think we can do it. If we did that, I think we can do this. Famous last words. So we found ourselves digging again. This is the Overlander's exercise routine. Find a road that hasn't been driven in a while. Stumble upon some forgotten avalanches. Get great exercise. With a bit more digging and traction boards, we sent the Jeep in as a guinea pig. Next, it was Rob's turn to drive his boat of a truck up and over. You're in it. Good. You slid your back slid a lot, but it slid into the corner. Yeah, yeah, because I think it was cutting the corner while I went around. That was not as bad as it looked. Yeah. Hopefully that's it. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm gonna say yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's All it. right, good. Both Rob and I made it through. The digging I think was necessary and the traction boards were necessary, but the actual event itself was not very dramatic, which is great. That's what we want. So hopefully that was the last one and it's smooth sailing. I think it's gonna be smooth sailing, but smooth mailing? So it's smooth sailing right I now. Like smooth mailing. Yeah. Are you just going with it? He's going with it. <laughs> but it was not smooth smealing, not even close. This is another avalanche. Oh wow, that, uh, you, do you think that's possible? This, this is a lot of snow. It's definitely an avalanche. This requires machinery to come cut this out, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm looking over here and there's just groups of trees that have been shredded and rammed into the road. I mean, there must be, I bet you there's a hundred trees here to cut. At the very least, this is impressive to see the aftermath of what looks to be an avalanche, but not so much fun to drive it. This is unfortunate. This sucks. Um, if you look over here, dude, it does not get better. So this is, this is definitely a no-go. So we backtracked and started heading down the mountain, something I hate doing, but it meant we got to see some of the views twice, which was the good news. The bad news was there was a weather pattern headed right for us on our way down. There's the valley floor. Looks like it's full of rain. Well, it just got dark. That thunderstorm that was forecasted to roll in at 5 rolled in early. It's 4.15 right now. And we're, almost, we're almost off the mountain, but I would love to get off before that thing hits. Um, it's just feeling very ominous at the moment. It got real dark, the clouds are super thick overhead. And that beautiful blue sky we had earlier that was just highlighting all of the beautiful mountains is totally gone. And now I'm just thinking it would be good to be at low elevation and just kind of wait for this storm to pass or go set up camp in a, you know, in a low-lying area because, yeah, it, it feels a little, like the hairs on the back of your neck start standing up. And these clouds roll in, you hear the thunder start rolling. It's like, kids, get in the car! <laughs> we need to get out of here! So that's what's going on right now. Well, I'm very glad we're reaching the valley floor at the moment. Yeah, I would not want that while I was somewhere difficult. 
There is hail in this. I think that's the mountain pass that we just came over up there to our right. Yeah, it looks like it's getting snowed on. For sure, that snow up there. The storms were swirling all around us, but so far they were clinging to the mountain ranges. So Rob decided to take a shortcut to get to the Lost River Range faster, something I thought was a mistake at first, but as we pointed our bumpers towards the mountains, I quickly changed my mind. So we are just coming up to these to this mountain range, the Lost River Mountain Range. And I don't know what these mountains are. I know Mount Bora is kind of up and to our right. These mountains that I'm looking at right here, it is not like anything I've ever seen in Idaho before. I mean it, it is like something you'd see in Switzerland or <laughs> it's like the Alps or Colorado or you know some some other scene that I'm used to in Idaho. This is just breathtaking. I mean, I cannot believe we're gonna end today at the foot of these massive, massive rock mountains. I am so blessed, I am so excited. I've been to a lot of places and seen a lot of beautiful things in my life, but it's hard to remember anything so striking as driving across the valley floor, storms all around us, heading towards these peaks. It was a moment I'll never forget. I don't care where you're from or where you've been, that is awesome. It is spectacular for sure. I can't wait to get up there. It just keeps getting better and better. I feel like I could come spend a lot of time exploring. It had been a long day, and as we got closer to the feet of these mountains, we started looking for places to camp. I hope we can find a good spot to camp because I'm exhausted. I agree. I am totally pooped. There were really no bad campsites at this point. Anywhere we settled for the night would be incredible. So we literally just stopped at the first place we found. Well, we made it to camp, and I can't believe this is our campsite. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Pretty late in the evening now. My only regret is that we didn't get here a little bit earlier to just enjoy the sunlight on these peaks, but man, man I mean, these are all like 11,000 peaks, sheer cliffs all around us with you know, snow still on them, and oh my gosh, I feel so blessed to be here. It's This is just wonderful. and. There's just nobody out here. No, we didn't see anybody. To, I think we saw maybe two cars the entire day. We get this whole valley to ourselves tonight to just sit and soak it in. And I am, I'm just really happy right now. I, I'm tired and I want to have dinner and I want to have a fire. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy. That night, things were quiet. There was nothing else to say. I don't think we had any more words to describe where we were. You me down. Me down. The beauty wasn't lost on the kids. While they may not romanticize it like I do, they could sense there was someplace special. And now we have a shared memory of that place that we keep together. Little by little you 
The next morning was just as spectacular as the evening, except with a clear blue sky and sun, and we soaked it up for as long as we could. It was time to go. When you're overlanding, it's always time to go. It's one of the things I love about it. But there are times when you want to linger just a bit longer, and this was one of them. However, Rob and I were both pretty excited about crossing through the Lost River Range. And while we had a beautiful stormy sky the night before, this morning we had a perfectly blue canvas that made the mountains look almost unreal. With Idaho's tallest mountain looking down on us, we headed out of this valley with vows to come back as soon as possible. Well, we are leaving these mountains behind and I gotta say, I'm really uh, sad to leave them. They are spectacular. It really feels like something not in Idaho. So this is a place that has, has seeped into my heart, I think, and I will definitely be back here and I will share it with my friends and family because it's pretty special. So now we are uh, headed through this valley. There is a pass that we're trying to get through called Double Spring Pass that cuts through the Lost Mountain Range. And our plan is to um, get through that mountain range and then uh, continue on through the Pioneer Mountain Range. There is a, uh, a route that, uh, that I know of that goes from Mackey to Ketchum. And so it should be a really easy route, should be really easy dirt roads, like basically any car could probably drive this route. Um, but it still cuts through some pretty incredible mountains. We're losing our time. We lost a lot of time yesterday on those mountains, but it was still really fun. So let's keep driving and, um, and see what these, these passes look like through these mountain ranges. Uh, excuse me, do you know how to get to catch them from here? No. Well, we're thinking we'll just take this road and keep driving. Does that sound right to you? Okay, I mean, I guess we'll just find out for ourselves. If you've ever been to a museum or an art gallery or been wine tasting for too long, eventually everything starts looking the same. The same church, same painting, same wine, but even though we'd seen a million majestic mountains on this trip so far, things still blew me away at every turn. There's really nothing else like it in Idaho. And for someone who was born and raised here, it was awakening to all the other parts of Idaho I haven't seen yet. I mean, if there's more stuff like this, I'm in. Okay, well, we are just about 20 miles outside of Mackey, Idaho, which is where we're gonna connect to the road that goes through the Copper Mountains, or the Copper Basin, it's the Pioneer Mountains. So we're just airing up because I think that road is like oiled dirt, and we're gonna drive through it really fast because I'm, we're trying to get back to Boise so I can get ready for Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. So uh, Rob's aired up, I just finished airing up, and we're gonna hit this highway and we're gonna hit this road, but I still think there are some incredible views on these mountains to come. The Pioneer Range is just outside of Ketchum, Idaho, and is the playground for folks in that area, which means you'll have a higher chance of seeing people, but also the roads are in great shape, and you don't need a four-wheel drive rig to enjoy the area. Oh, this is pretty. I'm assuming this is a very popular fishing area. Yeah, there's like three or four rivers and forks of rivers that run through here that's very popular with fly fishing. As we made our way down Trail Creek Road into Ketchum, a road I've driven many times, I had a chance to reflect on how freaking lucky I am to call this place home, 
Sure, we all love where we're from, but come on, this, this is my home. So thanks, Mom and Dad, for deciding to live here and raise kids, because this kid keeps finding reasons to stick around and see more. Well, we made it through all the passes, all the detours, all the reroutes. And it was an awesome trip. It, Rob is such an easy guy to travel with. Hey Rob, dude, thanks for hanging out on this trip. Yeah, uh, thanks for the, uh, the invite, I guess. I don't know if I invited myself or you invited yourself on this one. Yeah. It was just kind of mutually worked out, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We just had a blast experiencing these places in Idaho that I'd never been before and that hardly anyone has ever been before. And these routes, while not technical and difficult, are challenging and beautiful and worth the effort to go. So I am so grateful I got to do this. Now I'm gonna get everything going as fast as I can, get home, get ready for Overland Expo, Pacific Northwest. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.